Hi, this is Narmada, Assistant Professor, Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, KSO College of Arts and Science for Women. Now we are going to see about data structures. So in the data structures, we are going to see about abstract data type. An abstract data type can be a description or a concept that describes how we view a data structure, what it can contain and what operations it can perform. This includes an understanding of how the data structures may be formed, what it may or may not contain and also how a user would interact with the information contained within it. The next Python OOPS concept, uh, the program, it, it is used to design the program using classes and objects. The object is related to real world entities such as book, house, pencil, etc. The OOPS concept focuses on writing the reusable code. It is a widespread technique to solve the problem by creating objects. These are the object-oriented uh, principles, class, objects, methods, inheritance, polymorphism, data abstraction, encapsulation. So the classes in Python, the classes is a user-defined data type that contains both the data itself and the methods that may be used to manipulate it. A class can be created by using the keyword class followed by the class name. The next is Python inheritance. Inheritance is nothing but Inheriting something from the above object. So inheritance provides codes reusability to the program because we can use an existing class to create a new class instead of creating it from scratch. So inheritance, the child class acquires the properties and can access all the data members and functions defined in the parent class. A child class can also provide its specific implementation to the functions of the parent class. In Python, a derived class can inherit a base class by just mentioning the base in the bracket after the derived class name. Namespace in Python. In Python, a way to give each object a unique name is through a namespace. Variables and methods are examples of objects in Python. It is a collection of known symbolic names and the details about the thing that each name refers to. A name can be thought of a it's a key in the dictionary and objects are the values in the namespace. The next are the four types of namespaces are built-in, global, enclosing and local. Sh shallow copy and deep copy in Python. The assignment operator is used to create the copy of the Python object. But this is not true. It only create the binding between the target and the object. When we use the assignment operator instead of creating a new object, it creates a new variable that has the old object's reference. The copies are helpful when a user wants to make changes without modifying the original object at the same time. A user also prefers to create a copy work with mutable objects. Shallow copy. A shallow copy is a copy of an object that stores the reference of the original elements. It creates the new collection objects and then occupying it with the reference to the child object found in the original it makes copies of nested objects also so the function used is copy of function to implement it then deep copy a deep copy is a process where we create a new object and add copy elements recursively we will use the deep copy method which present in copy module the independent copy is created of original object and its entire object then introduction to analysis of algorithm Algorithm is an important part of the computational complexity theory which provides theoretical estimation for the required resources of an algorithm to solve a specific computational problem. So algorithm is this, the determination of the amount of time, space, resources required to execute it. Then types of algorithm, best case, worst case, average case. Asymptotic notations, the asymptotic notations are used to calculate the running time complexity of an algorithm. Big O notation, big omega notation, theta notation, little o notation, little omega notation. Then recursion, the process in which a function calls itself directly or indirectly is called recursion and the corresponding function is called a recursive function. So recursion is an amazing technique with the help of which we can reduce the length of our code and make it easier to read and write. It has certain advantages over the iteration technique. So list ADT in Python, the list ADT is, that is abstract data type can be used for list of integers, list of characters, 
list of payroll records even list of list a list is said to be empty when it contains no elements the number of elements currently stored is called length of the list then array based implementations in python the array is a process of memory allocation we can store more than one data in a same data type so the array can be represented as index and element the element is nothing but the item stored in the array the index is nothing but the location of the element which is stored in the array then array operations so we can do the basic operations are traverse insertion deletion search update in the arrays then linked list linked list is a linear data structure in which elements are not stored at a contiguous location rather than they are linked using pointers linked list forms a series of connected nodes where each node stores the data and the addresses of the next node so this is the diagram for the linked list the types of linked list single linked list double linked list circular linked list operations on linked list are insertion deletion searching the next is stack in python a stack is a linear data structure that stores item in last in first dot which is called as lifo in stack new element is added at one end and an element is removed from that end same and the insertion and deletion operation is takes place so the insertion and deletion operation is called push and pop operation the functions associated with the stack are empty size of p top push pop then q in python q is a linear structure which stores the data first in first out which is called as fifo so the insertion can be done in one end and deletion can be done in the other end so the operations associated with the queue are n queue and d queue the n queue is nothing but the insertion operation the d queue is nothing but the deletion operation then double ended queues a double ended queue is also known as deck has the attribute of inserting and deleting data elements from either end both the ends we can add or insert uh, delete an element Thank you.